Welcome to what's new in Autodesk Fusion 360 for October. This update is extra exciting as Fusion has reached its 10th birthday, a major milestone, and we hope that you are as excited as we are. As a present to you, this release is filled with new features and enhancements to improve your design, simulation, and manufacturing needs. Let's start off this update with the Electronics Workspace. Fusion's capabilities facilitate seamless transitions between product assembly and PCB layout, eliminating silos that can delay the product release. Mechanical engineers are now able to define construction lines on a PCB in the assembly design workspace or on a 3D model. These annotations will directly transpose to the PCB editor. This ensures precision in relaying crucial details about component placements, connectors, status lighting, switches, or enclosure warnings to be considered by the electronic engineer, eliminating design uncertainties, resulting in fewer prototypes and a sooner to market release. In electronics design, quickly understanding the layer function is paramount. Copper, silkscreen, solder mask layers, and more are pivotal to conveying information and ensuring proper manufacturing exports. Our latest update has aligned layer naming with industry standards to provide a consistent and straightforward experience. The building block of all electronic designs is having the correct components you need. The Fusion Library Editor provides all the tools for making parts quickly. In this update, you'll be able to modify the assigned 3D models directly in the Library Package Editor, which will trigger an update notification to the assigned libraries. Moving to the design workspace, the first new feature for this release is an exciting new library we're integrating into Fusion. Fasteners will now be natively supported and found under the Insert tab. We're also introducing some automation features that will make inserting these fasteners into your design simple and easy. Once you've chosen your washer, bolt, or nut from the fastener library, you'll be able to hover over the chosen hole, and Fusion will automatically find similar holes on the same plane and auto-populate those for you. That's right, no longer will you have to click over and over again for every hole on that bracket that you're trying to mount. Fusion will also automatically move bolts away from your surface to place washers underneath and update the joints to suit, removing the concern about the order in which you choose to place your fastener. We have created some commands to help you be more productive with your faster placement. The edit and insert similar functions all will add to the ease of use of this new library and will allow you to quickly make changes and update your designs. When first inserted into a design, fasteners are automatically added to the fastener project in the team hub for anyone to access later down the line. Just make sure to update the permissions to give everyone in your team access to this project. We can't wait to see how much more productive everyone will be with the new fasteners library, and we hope you're as excited as we are to start using it. A few months ago, we released the ability to copy designs with their related drawings. In this release, we're enhancing that functionality to allow you to copy older versions of a design with its respective drawings. Look out for the copy with drawings pop up when you copy your designs in the data panel. Next up, we have an improvement to configurations, our game changing feature from the last major release. With this release, you'll be able to configure the part number and description of any internal component inside a configured design. This gives you more control of your component data, allowing internal components to be better managed in downstream workflows, where the part number and description may be critical. For example, in a parts list inside your assembly drawing. This brings feature parity with external components whose part number and description are configurable using the respective configuration table, which can be found under the Properties tab. Last year, we added the ability to reference driven dimensions inside its defined sketch. You can now reference driven dimensions outside of that sketch. This means that you can now use driven dimensions anywhere you can input a value into Fusion. Whether that is in another sketch, a feature, or in a parameter table to drive expressions, you can leverage the mathematics built into Fusion to automatically calculate distances or angles. Where previously you would have to use some sort of mathematics like trigonometry to calculate and use these values elsewhere in your designs. These can be super powerful, and we encourage anyone that regularly uses the measure tool to find a value to use elsewhere, to create a sketch to make a driven dimension to use instead, allowing values to update as the model changes occur. Edit in place is continuing to be enhanced with every update. 
and this one is no exception. Now, the Surface Offset and Surface Patch tools are supported, allowing the editing of your Surface models in the context of assemblies. Edit in Place is feature rich, with all the most commonly used tools now supported, allowing you to increase your design efficiency in assemblies. With this release, we have added floating red markers that overlay the canvas and highlight self intersections in your form or T spine bodies. They will automatically scale and always be viewable to you and are additional to surface highlighting that already existed in Fusion. This will allow you to find and make corrections to your surfaces where previously this may have been a difficult or even impossible task. First up for the new drawing features is support for meshes in your drawings. This means that mesh files such as STLs or mesh imports will now appear in any drawings you make. Dimensions can be placed point to point and there is support for section views and annotations. Along with mesh support, drawings now support surface models too. Dimensions, annotations, and model updates are all fully supported and surface models will be treated the same as solid bodies in the drawing environment. There's now more control over the appearance of dash lines in your drawings. You can choose how long your dashes are by changing the line type scale under document properties. This will be particularly useful for views that are on the small or large side of scaling, where the dash lines can end up looking solid or too sparse. Just like the new line type scale options, custom text height now has more control when creating your drawings. Previously, you could select the heights from a selection via the drop down menu. Now, you can set the height of small, medium, and large text sizing across the drawings to any value you choose. In the simulation environment, we have now added the ability to sync results and sync legends for injection mold simulation outcomes. When selected, as the two sides will be linked together, as the legend is changing for one, it is changing for both, allowing you to quickly and easily compare results from two simulations while keeping key parameters the same. Moving on to manufacturing, we are excited to announce the release of another new toolpath strategy and additional features to increase your productivity. Fusion now has a new strategy available called Geodesic, which is unbelievably versatile creating either a scallop or blend style toolpath. With the ability to be three, four, or five axis, this new toolpath also has the added benefit of being able to machine undercut regions, removing the need for multiple toolpaths to machine complex part geometry. Toolpath offsets can be driven using a range of open, closed, or user-defined curves, further increasing its flexibility. Additional offsets can also be automatically added to the defined curves allowing the toolpath to overlap and blend machined regions, increasing the surface finish quality. Wrapped open pockets are now supported for adaptive and pocket toolpaths. This is beneficial for four axis machining and especially suited for turn mill machine tools without a Y axis. During machining, the tool axis is pointed towards the center of rotation, removing the need for Y axis motion when machining pockets that are wrapped. Previously in automated hole recognition, a complete cylinder was needed to define a hole feature. A new option to recognize partial holes is, is now available in the Options tab, allowing cylinders that are not complete to be recognized as hole features. This aids in the ability to pre-drill areas like slot ends or pocket corners. If you've created a tapped hole or a threaded feature in the design space, the information about that thread is now available to be used in manufacturing. Accessing this information can be done by using expression parameters that begin with auto thread. For example, auto thread pitch can be used as an expression when entering the pitch for a milling or turning thread operation. As this is associative, when you update the model in the design space, the changes will automatically update downstream in your toolpaths. Previously, when multiple contours were selected at different heights, each contour was treated as a different operation and the random order could not be optimized. Improvements have been made to ordering, making the behavior of contours more predictable and increasing optimization. When it comes to data management, we've streamlined the experience with the Manage extension. To start, 
We've improved the navigation experience to Recents and Project Data with the updated Home tab. We've also moved the access to the Manage Extension dashboard, Item Details, and Change Orders from the Home tab directly to the Manage toolbar. Selecting these new commands will open the corresponding data within the web experience, providing better performance. There have been some general announcements that are worthy of a mention as well. We are continuing to improve the performance of Fusion. With this update, a reduction in startup times should be noticeable. Additionally, some designs will open up significantly faster. Dynamic improvements to the performance of large assemblies has been made. Copying, patterning, link breaking, edit in place, and appearance changes should all now feel more snappy across the board. You should also see improved frame rates when orbiting around your models. A more responsive data panel and a reduced lag when opening and navigating and closing tabs. These performance enhancements will improve the overall experience when using Fusion. Well, that's a wrap for the October release, and we're excited to see how you integrate these new features into your next projects. Don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360. And most important, thank you for joining us on this 10-year journey. We hope you are as excited as we are to see what the next 10 years bring along Fusion to help you make anything.